So at Van Haven, we deal with a plethora of different customers from business owners, end users. But it's always really flattering when we have a VW enthusiast approach us and ask to collaborate on a build. And this van is, is very, very special. This particular customer has forever had VWs from Beatles. I do believe it's well, maybe a, an older camper van. And so we were approached to create something that would be good as a daily, but also something that would be very comfortable being taken to a show. And I think that this van is actually off to uh, caffeine and, and octane very shortly. It is sophisticated, very delicately styled. We've been very sort of tender on how we've gone about creating it and really made the stance of the van talk for itself. So I'm just gonna go through what we've done and how we've built Ed's van. The brief with this van was to create a vehicle that can be used on a daily basis. The company car being used at the moment is a, a really nice spec BMW, but it wasn't special enough. It's really being treated as a, a, a daily, just a, an A to B driver. At home, I know Ed's got a, a very, very nice Range Rover as well. So to create something that would have the Range Rover functionality, the coolness of the VW being part of the scene, but also something that's gonna be comfortable, luxurious, just a pleasure to be in every single day is, is quite a task. We've gone for the TTR exterior. We're very conscious not to create something overly sporty. We don't want to be too shouty. Just want something that's stylish, classy. And we've done that by using lots of chrome accenting. We've retained the VW chromes and badges and the two front streamers. We've paired up the ensemble with a really quite delicate wheel. Again, using lots of chrome styling, it's repeated on the sidebars as well. The air ride is awesome, and it is possible that the customer is going to be staying in this at a later date. They've built in a lot of habitation electrics for him, uh, and the air ride actually works really, really well for that. Once lowered, the van's rock steady, so it's not very likely to move. So if you are staying in the van and getting up, lying down, moving around the place, it's not going to wobble about, it's going to be nice and level. So that will certainly work, work for him. But so far as stance when static, it's really impressive when aired out and the, the wheels are sat right up inside the arches. It just looks really cool and it's gonna fit in perfectly with all the other dubs um, at, at, at shows. We've kept the interior really sympathetic with the original plastics. So we've gone for a black and gray. The black top side has been completely overhauled. We've gone for black carpets, black Alcantara. We're using a satin black ashen gray paint and gloss around the Discover Media screen. We've retrofitted the Digi Dash. Ed's gonna be spending a lot of time in this van. It's gonna be used to go to different clients throughout, throughout the week. And so the, the navigation entertainment system have to be on point. Um, very functional um, and just a great tool for using every single day. Ultimately it has to be comfortable, we've, we've really injected some Alcantara touches into the seats. Ed really loved the way in which we can put Alcantara on certain panels of the seats and on the armrest just to soften up the aesthetic of the leather. Moving into the rear, we've got full leisure battery, hookup, inverter, all the systems have been built in, it's highly likely that we're going to be using this for maybe camping in the future. Ed's a really handy guy. And quite often, instead of asking Van Haven to create a finished product, um, we're often asked, particularly by enthusiasts who maybe want to add their own sort of style to the van, just to create the nice sort of base or the foundations for people to then be able to go and add their own accessories. The beauty of the custom van market is that the, the aftermarket for accessories and often for, for user fitted equipment is, is vast um, and, and people have the opportunity to do that on their own. Um, and we're more than happy just to create or, or install all the electrics so uh, the, the end user can go mad and, and install what they want at a, a later date. It's a, it's a really cool thing to, to be able to do. Digi Dash, such an awesome addition to the vans. 
Um, viewers may have noticed in the Sportline video we did not so long ago, but it's now coming um, from Standard in some of the bands, but it's something that we've been retrofitting for, for, for a long time. Now, DigiDash originated with Audi, came out in the R8 2015, I believe, um, and just really caught on, it's a really popular option. Why is it good? Uh, effectively, it allows you two screens as opposed to one. This screen is exclusively controlled by your fingertips off of the steering wheel, which means that your passenger is free to fiddle about with the center console. What that means is for the driver, it's far less distracting. I can have access to all of my music, entertainment, radio, instrumentation, and mapping. And it also saves the odd domestic, for example, if your partner's playing around with the screen. Typically, if you were going to a new place and you had your navigation enabled, you'd have to go, ah, oh, stop changing music, I can't see where I'm going. Well, this allows two systems to work simultaneously and is an absolute joy, joy to use. Also avoids you having to look or actually touch a touch screen. Touch screens are quite distracting, frankly, and a good old fashioned button is a lot more precise and allows you to operate it without actually diverting your attention from the road. So I'm a huge fan. We've been fitting a fair few of these. It works so, so well. The technology is awesome and I cannot recommend it enough. So this is the Discover Media System. We can actually retrofit the DigiDash to vans that don't have this feature, but it means that you can't actually get any of the navigation and mapping onto the DigiDash, so it's kind of pointless. Most of the vans that we specify will come with the Discover Media System from factory because it just does so much more than the standard system. The reason we like it, integrated navigation primarily, and secondly is wireless CarPlay. So I have my iPhone connected to, um, to this at the moment. I can connect twofold, one via Bluetooth, much like a normal vehicle, or I can connect via CarPlay. And that enables a Wi-Fi connection, which then sends an awful lot more data from my phone to the van, which means instead of just being able to do calls and the occasional text, I can effectively use my apps from my phone through the van. And that's brilliant because some of the online mapping systems, be it Apple Maps, Google Maps, um, are just far better. Oh, it's Google saying hello to me. Um, are just far better than, than the integrated systems in the, that come with the vehicles. Um, I've also got full access to my Spotify titles, so massively into my music, all of my playlists come up to hand. Um, it's just cool, I mean it's a massive dodge, I can effectively use my phone in its entirety uh, through, through the van. Unfortunately I can't play Angry Birds, obviously only some apps are, are enabled, but it's a very cool piece of kit. If you've had VWs and you're, you're used to sort of well, any VW really, you'll feel really at home. It does look a bit complicated and, and advanced, but it could not be simpler. You can see on the left-hand side, I've still got all of my cruise control and my volume control. But on the right-hand side, this would normally change a menu in the center of the, of the dashboard. It's simply expanded, but the button is working exactly the same way. So I can go through my different modes, my assistance systems, navigation, audio, mobile phone, vehicle status, driving data, fuel, etc., etc. And if we click the view button, we can toggle between having dials or having the impetus put on the information behind. We can zoom into the map, we can zoom out, we can even load up predetermined destinations. Of course, if you want to enter a new postcode or an address, ABC, etc. It has to be done through the main system. But it works so, so well. And within two, three clicks, I can change the radio station and then nip back again to my navigation so I can see where I'm going. It's very cool. A fantastic driver aid. I've got all of my digital speedo, so it's super accurate. I can see what gear I'm in. If I am playing around and in manual mode on the gearbox, it would even tell me which, which gear I am, much like your, your, your normal display. It looks sexy, it's a far more modern, modern concept. And in every car, a lot of modern vehicles got these in, from Lambos through to Range Rovers, everyone's loving the DigiDash.
air ride such a key feature of the design of this van. It seems um, appropriate that we delve into some of the details and how the system works. So an air ride suspension, instead of having like a spring and a shock absorber, the spring part of the suspension is replaced by an air spring or an airbag. That airbag um, has can have different amounts of, of air in it and that is controlled via this which is the controller. The controller will allow air from well which is stored in an air compressor to be sent to any four of these airbags and is always shown in PSI which is effectively the pressure. So the more pressure we put inside the air spring the more the spring will expand and hence will we'll give it. Now when we set up our air suspensions we have a number of different options and that will be really down to the customer's preference on sort of stance, how they want the van to look and also a little bit around, around comfort. We love air suspension because it's the most adaptive suspension that's available on the market. Um, it looks cool because it can go up and down. You've also got what they call hydraulic suspension, suspension or hydro suspension which can give you the extreme highs and extreme lows as well, but it's an awful lot harder because it's hydraulic as opposed to the cushion of the, of, of the airbag. Um, so maybe just a, a, a little bit of knowledge there. Air suspension was the right decision for this van, just due to the customer's vibe and style and how they wanted the van to look, aesthetics, but also how they wanted to drive it every day. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool option to, to go to. So how is it controlled? So we have this really cool air system from Airlift Performance. They provide the controller and also the manifold that directs the air from the storage tank into the different airbags. And we often pair up our suspension systems with a Bilstein shock absorber. So using high-end, really nicely built equipment. You can see here in the top right-hand corner that this is the amount of pressure in the storage tank and then we can send this pressure from here into the different corners. So if I want to, for example, lift the van up, there are three presets on this system. I press this button and the green will preview how much air is going to be put into each of the corners. A lot of work is put into calibrating this so that our customers, when they come and pick up their van, can just hop in, drive off, and everything's pre-programmed so they don't have to fiddle too much about levelling things out and having everything set up properly. However, if, like Ed, they're an engineer and are very, very likely to want to tinker with everything, it's highly adjustable. We can actually change each corner up and down by pressing so two buttons. There's a plus and a minus attributed to each corner. So you can see here, in the top right, is being changed and we're in manual override mode. We normally then preset three different settings. Lift, if you're going over bumps. Medium, which is sort of comfortable drive, drive mode. Uh, low, which is kind of low drive mode. And you can also air out the system. The term air out means to release all of the pressure from the airbags so that the van is literally sat on the ground or, or, or on the wheels. Uh, that's when it's parked up. Obviously you can't drive like that because you'd possibly risk doing some damage to the van. But at car shows and when you're parked up or, or any sort of static situation, that's when these things look really, really cool. But airing out is really just a, um, it's a bit of a flex, I guess, um, and really just um, a, a result of taking the air out of the system. So most people won't do that all of the time. They normally use the air because they want the adaptive ride height and, and the comfort, which is, which is good. Now, a little bit of maintenance required um, with, with, with air systems. So I'd like to show you this. If you go around to the back of the van, there's a little air vent. We keep all of our air compressors underneath the van in, well, normally where the spare, where the spare wheel goes. It's very important just by, by, by way of habit or routine, every week or so, just to purge the air system of, of its air. Um, what that does is it le lets any condensation or water out of the compress compression tank. Whenever air is under pressure, much like in our workshop air compressor systems, um, water is the enemy. Water is the result of compressed air. And if you get water inside the tanks, it can cause rust and corrosion inside your air tanks. It's very important just to purge the system, 
Sunday, once you've got all of your Sunday afternoon cleaning kit out, reach under, press the valve, it's like a little bike valve, purge some of the air out, um, and that'll keep your system nice and healthy. Ed, I hope you enjoy your van. Thank you so much for working with us in creating it. And um, yeah, we'll see you at the shows.